All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a, a fairly hungover edition of Football Daily, where today we need to talk about Newcastle United. Yes, lads, it has finally happened. Newcastle fans worldwide rejoice. Mike Ashley is out of the exit door, and I think you're pretty happy about it. I mean, I still remember when Mike Ashley first took over and he said, didn't he? I really want to have some fun. I want to win some trophies. I still remember the images of him being sat in the stand in that Newcastle shirt. I mean, just look at the state of him. Look at the state of him. And it has been a long old 14 years, hasn't it? And his description of, I want to have some fun, is probably the direct opposite of what's actually happened at Newcastle. What is the opposite of the word fun? Shit show is probably more appropriate. I mean, let's not forget this is a man who's been in charge of two of the six relegations in Newcastle's 129 year history, rebranded St. James's Park, the Sports Direct Arena. Uh, his treatment of Kevin Keegan was pretty shambolic. His treatment of Jonas Gutierrez was even worse. I mean, there's pretty much an endless list of faults caused by Mike Ashley. In fact, I saw a clip earlier of Gary Neville explaining this in a way that's much more eloquent than my hungover head can comprehend. Mike Ashley doesn't communicate to these fans. He doesn't talk to them. He can't resonate with them. They don't feel what he feels. He doesn't feel what they feel. That is, a, that is where it's disjointed, disconnected. But does and that matter? Yeah, absolutely matters, because what we're saying here is that, yes, of course it's run as a business and it has to be sensible, but this is not a business. Football clubs cannot just be a business. They're more than that. They, you know, Football clubs 40 years ago were seen the most important component in the community. The Premier League has come, there have been international investors come in, and there have been good international investors, there have been good domestic investors, and there have been good bad of both. But you have to connect with the fans and the people in the city. Mike Ashley does not connect with the people in this city. Let's forget about Mike Cashley, though. He's out in the past, isn't he? And let's focus on the new ownership. The Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, also known as PIF. Now, the PIF are worth a reported 305 billion pounds. 305 billion. To put that into some context, yeah. Manchester City's ownership group worth somewhere in the region of 20 billion, 25 billion. Roman Abramovich somewhere in the region of 8 to 10 billion. The Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, 305 billion. 305 me. But we do have to cover both sides of this story. Yes, they might be worth an awful lot of money, but Saudi Arabia also has one of the worst human rights records on planet Earth. And yes, the Premier League has claimed that it's received assurances that the Saudi state will not be involved directly in the running of Newcastle at any level. I've read the statement. But you can still see the links. Let's not forget that the chairman of the PIF is Mohammed bin Salman, who's the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. And there are plenty of reasons that Amnesty International, loads of other humanitarian groups have lobbied the Premier League to stop this happening. They are totally opposed to it. Because like many ownership groups around the world, you know, we've also seen it potentially at PSG, potentially at Manchester City. This is about more than just the sporting project. This is about improving Saudi Arabia in the eyes of the world. In fact, I'm not the best at explaining this sort of thing. I'm a bit of a dunce, so I'm throwing over to a professor. Professor Simon Chadwick, who talked about it much, much better than I can on Sky Sports. I think they want to do it for lots of reasons. Um, they they like football in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they want to be at football's top table. But I think this is not specifically about football. I, I, I think they're doing it for industrial and economic reasons to diversify their economy. Uh, they're about to, for example, launch uh, a new airline. You can imagine that new airline appearing as Newcastle United's new shirt sponsor. The Saudis are also very keen to project a, a very different image of themselves to the image that, that many of us are, are used to. And so those concerns by Amnesty International, which some people refer to as sport washing, are also part of the equation too. So this is this is not simply 11 versus 11 and the squad up at St. James's Park. It's a much more complicated issue than that. But I'm interested to hear from you guys at home. What do you think of the PIF takeover of Newcastle United? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? I'm very interested on this one because 
I, I think a lot of people are very, very torn over it. Anyway, the woman who made all this happen, Amanda Stavely. I've heard her name more than any name involved in the Newcastle takeover over the last four or so years, however long it's been now. She was speaking yesterday, wasn't she? about just what the future holds for Newcastle United. And before we get into sort of predictions and reactions, let, let's have a little watch. Premier League football is the best in the world uh, and Newcastle United is the best team in the world and we want to see it get those trophies, obviously, uh, at top of the Premier League in Europe. But to get trophies, it means investment, patience, time, uh, and we want everybody just to um, you know, work with us to build the club to what it needs to be. Where do you see Newcastle United as a club in say five to ten years time? Well we want Newcastle, to, Newcastle United is, deserves to be top of the Premier League and you know we want to get there and it'll take time but we will get there. Yes. Have you had a chance to speak to the manager as well? I did speak to the manager and say hello and introduce ourselves and we look forward to speaking to him over the next few uh, few days. So what is the future for Steve Bruce here at the football club? We, we you know, obviously we're very supportive of Steve uh, and we've spoken to him and, you know, what we're going to do is, is not talk about managers or what big signings we can make at the moment. We're going to do a review right through the football operations. Uh, we're going to do a review of all the commercial side of the club as well and we're going to come back uh, and, and make some decisions. Now she didn't say it directly there but I think it's kind of growing in likelihood right that Steve Bruce is going to leave his role as Newcastle United manager and there's going to be some sweeping changes at the club. So I thought we'd finish with you know some fun little predictions around Newcastle United, nothing too serious and I wanted to get in touch with number one somebody who's not too serious, number two somebody who's a massive Newcastle United fan. Who popped into my head straight away? Will any. So I said, Will, come on, mate, give us your reaction to that Newcastle takeover and also throw us a prediction for your first major signing in a Newcastle United shirt. He did 50% of it. Hello, Football Daily. How is it going? Uh, I hope you're all well. I am. Uh, just here to say I don't give a f who was signed. I really could not care less, right? As long as it's no more ice baths in wheelie bins, it's a positive, right? We'll just keep Alan, build around Alan. All is well. Also, just want to say special shout out to uh, Zach Jellab and Kieran Collin for sending me this when it fell through last year. Love you, lads. All the best. Have a good one. So, Will, like most Newcastle fans, don't really give a f who the first major signing is, but I thought we'd play along. Now, on Sunday Vibes, we're doing a Newcastle special. So, I want you guys at home to put in the comments right now who is going to be the manager that takes over, who is going to be their first major signing, and who is going to be their first major sale. I think that's an important one too. So I'm going to give my three for those categories, who I would pick as each one. I think the manager, I reckon they might go with Frank Lampard. I think there's probably better options. You know, if I was Newcastle United's new owners, I'd be doing all I can to lure Potter away from Brighton. Seriously, I'd be chucking everything at him. Uh, but I think they might go for Frank Lampard. A bit of a statement, a bit of a name. He's going to cause a few ripples across the footballing world. Frank Lampard, back in a job, superstar ex-footballer, takes over at Newcastle. So I can see them going down the Frank Lampard route. In terms of star signing, I can see them signing Coutinho. I think that's sort of a name that gets the headlines. He's going to be on big wages, a little bit Robinho-esque. Barcelona are going to be very, very keen to do a deal. I think they might end up dipping quite heavily into those sort of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Juventus reject pools. Um, so I'm going to go Lampard, Coutinho, first major sale. I mean, do they have any major saleable assets? Not really. So I don't know what to say here. They're going to get rid of John Joe Shelby. Rejoice. So that was a sort of reaction, a bit of prediction to Newcastle United. I don't want to go too in-depth because, like I said, we are doing a special Sunday Vibes on how to rebuild Newcastle. How to bring it back from the dirt. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said, let me know your manager, your major signing, your major sale. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Up the tune.